What's up, beautiful souls? Welcome back to my channel, The Soulful Way. If you're new to my channel, I'm Soulful Maya, a licensed esthetician. I'm also a unisex skincare and grooming curator, which is all about self-care, and I am a pretty dope boy mom. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how I personally set up a pop-up spa when I'm in Atlanta. So if you're new to my channel, I am an esthetician here in Jacksonville, Florida, and I work out of my living room. I know that's so weird, <laughs> but um, I love not having the overhead and I'm legally able to do it. So it works out perfect. And I have the perfect little apartment set up where you wouldn't even tell. You couldn't even tell, right? So we're gonna talk about how I um, structure my spa pop-up experience in Atlanta. I actually travel to Atlanta every quarter. So every three to four months, I go to Atlanta and I take clients. Majority of the clients are like private parties with a group of about four to six people. And um, I work, honey. I grind when I go to Atlanta. I'm, I'm up at the butt crack of dawn setting up stuff. Um, so we're going to talk about if you're interested in doing that how you can execute it, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, so one of the first things that you're gonna have to do is, of course, figure out where you want to set the pop-up up. up. Um, so, for instance, I travel to Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. I pretty much lived there my entire life, so I know a lot of people that I went to high school with. I know a lot of people that I was in the club with, <laughs> um, and I follow these people on social media and stuff like that, and of course, those people know people. So get a buzz right figure out where you're gonna go um i would say start somewhere that you're comfortable with so you know how to maneuver through the city you know kind of things that they like and the, the demographics there because that's really important you don't want to uh set up this big um experience and no one shows up okay because that is a waste of resources a waste of time money energy and you're going to get very frustrated and like why the hell did i just do this okay so you want to figure out where you're going find a place that's super comfortable for you and create a buzz okay put you know a little fishing pole out there and see if you have any interest you know i started on instagram that's the pretty much the main platform that i'm on what I did was I created a lot of like personalized little videos and I sent them to each individual's DMs like, hey, what's up? I'm coming to Atlanta for a pop up. And if you're interested in the soulful vibe and the soulful experience, let me know if you are available between these dates. If you are not available please share this video with someone who you think may be interested in a facial if they don't support you it is what it is <laughs> you know support comes in many different forms so i did that and um once i got about 10 good people between six and ten like people that i knew that they were going to come they were for real they were serious i went ahead and moved on to the next process which was finding a location. This is the trickiest part, finding a location, because I was very, very, very specific on how I want things done. You know, if you know another esthetician in the state that you're going to or the location that you want, you can ask them, hey, do you have extra space for me? Do you have an extra room that I can maybe pay you a percentage? because um, I would like to take some of my clients here. That is a great way to collab with another esthetician, another beauty professional, because when you're gone, they can take your clients, right? So it's a win-win for both of you guys. They're coming in, you're coming in using their space, you know, and you're also bringing clients to their environment. You know, you're only coming every two, three, four months or however you decide to do it, but you're coming in, you're taking your clients and they're also possibly going to be able to see the space to see if they're interested in getting services from that other beauty professional so it's a win-win for both of you guys i didn't really know any other beauty professionals in atlanta 
Um, I'm still a very new baby esthetician. I think I've been an esthetician. It'll be two years in August. So I'll be licensed officially for two years this coming August in 2022. So I didn't really know nobody. So that wasn't even an option in my mind. And even to this day, it's still really not an option for me because everyone is different. Everyone's flow is different. Everyone, how they work is different. Everyone's customer experience is different. Okay. So I chose the route to do an Airbnb. Now, Airbnbs or rental properties are very tricky because they don't allow parties per se. And what I was doing was kind of like a party. So I did search for specific locations because I needed it to feel a certain way. I needed the vibe to be a certain way. I didn't want an apartment. I didn't want, you know, a small space. I needed a good atmosphere where I can kind of spread out, have my my spa bed, my equipment, and be able to have my guests comfortable sitting and mingling and drinking champagne and stuff like that. So I looked at a few places and I did find I did find about five to six places. But then I got rejected when I when I told them straight up because you got to tell them straight up, you know, why are you coming to visit? I would like to have guest, frequent guest over for two hour increments at a time. I said it is not a party, but I'm doing a spa pop up and majority of them say, no, that is still a party. You're not able to do that. So they decline my request. I did find this one couple who lives in California there in like the the film production uh, business and they have this perfect cute super cute art deco house it was in the perfect location they had this beautiful beautiful like flower mural on the wall inside the house they have this great chef kitchen I don't even know what the floor was I can't remember but I knew that I was going to be able to have my spa area right in the middle of the place and then people will be able to come through the doors and sit on the couch and see the hors d'oeuvres and the champagne and it was going to be perfect so I had booked that location right so I'm like okay guys I got my location I'm excited let's start you know collecting deposits what's up um but before that happened they actually canceled my reservation because something happened in California where they were postponed on their film and they ended up moving back into their spot right that is the one part of um doing a spa pop up securing the location securing the location is tricky because you don't live there <laughs> unless you unless you have a rental house this is a smart thing to do unless you have a rental place that you're renting out for airbnb that you can you know get up for grabs and you can go set up in that spot now that's the smartest way because you flipping your money big time okay but i didn't have that all right so i lost i lost that location so I was like, oh God, what am I going to do? I don't told all these people that I'm coming. I'm coming for seven days, you know, and they're ready and I have enough people. I'm going to make this money. So what am I going to do? So I had a, um, a friend of mine that I went to high school with, she, you know, she saw my little dilemma because I posted damn near everything on my Instagram stories and she saw like my, for my rental that was approved fell through. And so she sent me a contact of a friend of hers who was a friend of her sister's or something like that, they were in a sorority together. And she's like, hey, try this person. Um, she's a rent, you know, she's she's a host, an Airbnb host. And um, she's also black, a black woman. And um, see if this home, this rental property fixed your aesthetic and then reach out to her, which is, it worked out great. Thank you so much, Jewel. <laughs> okay, so um, I looked at it and it was an old historic house and it had a huge living room and that living room flowed into like a, a sunroom with some French doors that kind of flowed into the kitchen, but everything was kind of like sectioned off. So you couldn't see like the back of the house, which is kind of how my apartment is now. So I was like, bam, this is perfect. Um, it was enough space for my private parties to come in, come in one room. They can play games, they can eat, they can drink. And then 
you know, flowing into the sunroom. I could have the French doors kind of closed a little bit. I can have them open. It was just a perfect location. And I still use this location to this day. So obviously the location was spot on. So I reached out to her and said, hey, I am looking to reserve your space for about seven to eight days. And I'm not having a party, but I am having frequent guests come over for like, a facial in about one and a half hours to two hour increment she was like okay bet you know no problem i went ahead and booked i booked um her rental and i was like okay this is it. i'm excited okay so i got um on my booking site and i created a little like atlanta pop-up booking so people can just go directly there create an experience okay create an experience i have a very specific soulful experience that i have here locally that i wanted to mimic in atlanta now atlanta is a totally different vibe from jacksonville florida than my bad and bougie is over there so i already knew the type of vibe that they were going to be expecting like I'm from I'm from there. So these are my people. I know. I already know what they like. So created an experience. Experience can be anything from the smell, the aroma they get when they open the door, the music that is playing when they walk in the door, the type of vibe, the type of energy that they feel, you know, the, what they see, the things that they see. So some of the things that I implement in my experience when I travel and locally is I have my own playlist. My playlist is on Apple Music, it's on Spotify, and I allow my clients and as well as other estheticians to download this, and it's called The Soulful Vibes. It's about 700 songs long, but I handpick all of these songs, and it's different genres, it's different moods, and you have to play it on shuffle. It's just amazing, okay? So, so that's one of the things that I implement. I have a playlist that I create, um, and then I, I play throughout my sessions. The second thing that I do is the smell. I have candles. I burn candles like I'm a freaking witch, okay? I have incense in the bathroom, candles in the bathroom, candles by the window, candles in the, in the foyer when you enter. A sensual type of smell um, really does help create an experience. The other thing is the actual service. My service, whether it's out of town or here almost about two hours because i want to implement not only skincare but as well as self-care they go together which is how i create the soulful experience because i don't want any of my guests to just come in let me hurry up and treat their skin and be like all right deuces the black community and this is for anybody but the black community in general we are so much on the go we don't really take care of ourselves as much as we should we don't really find time to just relax and unwind so that is that was something very important when i created my business when i created my brand that i wanted to fuse self-care and skin care and make it as realistic and as regimen as humanly possible because i know as a black community we are always just on to the next we're hustling we're on the go so i have my clients unwind drop their phone kick the shoes off take the shirt off, whatever the case is, get underneath the cover and just really chill. Just vibe out, okay? I'll do the rest. All you gotta do is lay here. It's pretty much what I tell them. All right, so after you have created a buzz and got some interested um, candidates or clientele and you found your location, then you have to figure out what, your, what type of services you're gonna bring. My clientele's they really don't do facials. They they take care of their skin, but they really don't know how. And I have a very diverse group of clientele. So I'm speaking about all of my clients in general. I am a foundational esthetician, a fundamentals type of esthetician. So we start with the basic, building a routine, doing the routine consistently. The things that I teach my clients that come to me in Florida, I want to transition and teach those same things to the clients in in Atlanta when I'm visiting them because it's is important regardless. So that leads me to not offer um all kind of services. I don't offer chemical pills in my practice at all just because if my clients don't understand the value of sunscreen, 
I'm not going to give them a quick fix. I'm not going to give them something that can destroy their skin if they can't do the foundations. I'm just not going to do it. So I don't offer that. How I think about the services that I offer my clients in Atlanta, um, it's all inclusive. You take the guesswork out of it because they don't even, they don't know anyway. I don't give them a menu of would you like micro channeling, micro needling? Do you want an enzyme? Do you want dermaplaning? Because we will be going back and forth through DMs trying to pick the perfect treatment for them and I've never seen their skin. So I say everything is customized based on my client's skin and I will make that decision once I see you and once I touch your skin. Um, but for the, for the time being, it's an all-inclusive facial. That means I will do everything uh, within this time limit and you're going to pay a set price. And the price point that I that I give my clients when I'm traveling is $200. I offer food, I offer wine, champagne, green tea, I have a vibe. And um, so it's $200 per person. When it's a private party, it's a little bit more. Um, and it just depends on how many people are going to be there. And it depends on how long I'm going to be working because there has been instances where I've worked until two o'clock in the morning, okay? Like I said, when I travel and I do spa pop-ups, I'm there to hustle, I'm there to make money. So I'm working from 9 a.m. until 2 a.m. Um, you got your location, you got your clientele, you've thought about creating your experience, um, you've booked everything, everything is set. Now all you gotta do is pack and get there. <sighs> Packing and getting there. Okay, so I have a small car. I have a Hyundai Elantra. So it's a little small car. It's just me and I have a seven-year-old son. From Jacksonville to Atlanta is about five hours. My mom still lives in Atlanta. So um, I do not want to be bothered per se by my son. When I do travel out of town, it's usually like for seven or eight days. So obviously my son is at school. So I go like spring break, summertime. Thanksgiving, Christmas break, and so on and so forth. So um, he needs somewhere to go, okay? He ain't finna mess up my money. So I sent him right over there to my mom's house. Baby, go out there in the yard, do some backflips, and play with the dog, okay? Because mama is over here trying to get that, that money. I always bring my towel warmer. I bring my massage bed. I have like memory foam and stuff like that. So I pack all of that. That folds away really easy, really simple. And I put it in the trunk. I take my steamer. I break that down into two pieces. It breaks down to two pieces. Um, and, and then I also bring like my main modality, which is I have a a hydrabrasion machine four in one, so it does microdermabrasion, hydrabrasion, oxygen, radio frequency, so on and so forth. I really only use the um, the hydrabrasion technology. I bring my hands because this is where all the magic is, and I bring um, my supplies for dermaplaning because dermaplaning is like the easiest treatment. It works for almost everybody. It's instant gratification, instant glow. So that's one of the main treatments that I always do. Um, I do offer um, micro channeling, micro needling to my local clients, but I do not offer those type of treatments for my clients that are out of state because I cannot manage them out of state. If something goes wrong and I'm back in Florida, I'm, I can't I can't get my hands on you. I would have to refer you to somebody to work on whatever issues you're having. So I don't even I don't even offer anything like that um, to them because I don't see them enough. I'm not seeing them once a month. They're going to have to wait three or four months before they see me again. And that's just too, too long. I don't offer anything like that. It's just not realistic for them. And I don't want to just take their money take that type of money just because. So I don't offer it. So I do dermaplaning, acne treatment, which is just basically supplies, just in case I have kids come, because I take kids as well. So I have kid-friendly kid products. I have acne-friendly products. I have sensitive and rosacea products. And I just pack them all um, in little travel bags, right? And I pack my suitcase and my son packs his suitcase. And we're we're stacked up. That little Elantra is stacked up. There is no room left. The trunk is filled. It's way down in the back. My son is sitting in the front seat with his game and, and we're off. We're driving five hours to our destination and um, 
it's a it's really dope it's a really dope vibe and a dope experience so listen if you have ever thought of going back to your hometown or traveling somewhere don't be afraid you just got to get the basic setup that's all you need you just got to get the clients you got to get a location secure and get the location um pack your stuff up and create an experience that's all you have to do it don't overthink it make day behinds book individual appointments just like you would do locally let me let me talk about the policy make sure your policy is strictly enforced and that they understand if every client is booking their own appointment with a deposit and a credit card on file and they know you know they know when their appointment is they have it on their calendar um you send out reminders because you're going to have to put in some extra work because chances are you're not going to you're not booking this for a week away you have to put time in it it does require time to set everything up and if you give people about a 30 to 60 day notice they probably will forget so when they book I'll send them another reminder at the end of the month and I'll send another reminder maybe three weeks before their appointment just to make sure, hey, we're on the same page. You know if you don't come to your appointment, I am going to charge you 100%. I love you, but this is business and I need my money, okay? So just making sure that your policies are in place, they're on point, and that you guys have an understanding that you're coming to get a service. Ain't no discounts. I know I grew up with you, girl, but you got to pay 100%. And people are going to respect you. Just keep it the same across the board, no matter friend, family, sister, mama, brother-in-law, cousin, Tracy, whoever the case is. Just keep it fair across the board and you will get you, you will have a good time and you'll want to be able to do it more often. So yeah, I'll do another video to really discuss how I set up my policies. I'll tell you the story about how I had 11 people cancel on me, how I wanted to like really fight everybody, but I'm um, just going there, um, create a good vibe, a good energy, create an experience and add value, add value for these people to want to come back and want to like, you're my esthetician. I'm going to wait three or four months. I ain't going to see nobody else. Like you are my esthetician. And um, I, I promise you, it'll be a great experience. It will be a great experience. So um, thank you for tuning in. If you are have lasted this long, please like, follow, and subscribe for more videos. Um, I really want to focus on just the stuff behind the scenes of being a small business owner, being an esthetician, and the things that I am learning and have learned um, over these last several years. So again, thank you so much for watching. Peace.